friends, I am Dr. Risha Sai Pangalu, sharing my views on common cold and use of antibiotics. Imagine you are suffering from common cold. You have headache, body pain, cough and uh, excessive sneezing associated with mild fever and you rush to the hospital and doctor sees you. After seeing and examining, he gives the tablet paracetamol and tablet citrosin. But after going home, you take adequate rest and take those medications, but you find no relief. Next day you reach the hospital. With a harsh tone, you just utter it to the doctor, doctor please give me antibiotics. If doctor is friendly or if he is your family friend or if he is a money oriented doctor, doesn't want to lose his reputation, he may prescribe few antibiotics, especially like amoxicillin or azithromycin. But let me share my views on prescription of antibiotics and use of antibiotics in a disease called common cold. What is this common cold infection? Common cold is a type of upper respiratory tract infection. Majority of time, mild upper respiratory tract infections are viral infections. I repeat, viral infections. It is estimated that 60 to 75 percent of the upper airway infections are caused by viruses. More than 200 varieties of viruses cause upper respiratory tract infection. Most commonly, common cold is caused by rhinovirus. In fact, human rhinovirus, we call it HRV. They are further divided into human rhinovirus type A, B and C. Initially, it infects an individual. He may cough or sneeze in front of you without covering his face or you may come in contact with the tissue papers or clothes of an infected person or you may come in contact with the surfaces that he has touched including shaking hands will help in the transmission of the disease. Directly or indirectly virus reaches the mucus of upper respiratory tract. Rhinoviruses attach to the cells of upper respiratory tract with the help of specific receptors and they start infecting the cells. They start multiplying there. Because of this, there are immunological reactions. Because of immunological reactions, you develop signs and symptoms. It hardly takes one or two days for infection. Later, virus secreted in droplets, nasal secretions, or in aerosols which are generated while coughing or sneezing. What are the signs and symptoms of common cold infection? I don't think I need to explain this in detail because everybody is a victim of common cold. Symptoms include rhinorrhea, there are excess of secretion from the nose, sneezing, patient may have throat pain, patient may have difficulty in swallowing, he may have dry cough, later on it turns into wet cough or cough along with the sputum. After a day or two, he may have fever associated with body pain along with some headache. He may have vomiting or uh, diarrhea as a symptom, associated symptom of the viral infection. Based on signs and symptoms, we will confirm the diagnosis. Management is generally conservative. Based on the clinical signs and symptoms, doctor will prescribe the medications. Antibiotics are not prescribed. I mean antibacterial medications which will not have any effect on viral infections. Common cold is generally caused by viruses. 75% of the time it is caused by viruses. In this condition, use of antibacterial medication is not at all required. Doctor may prescribe maybe because of pressure on him, 
by the patient or by the pharmaceutical company or by the hospital administration. Even hospitals do prescribe these medications maybe because of wrong antibiotic policies or the trend that is used in the hospital. Viral infections will not be cured by antibiotics such as amoxicillin or azithromycin or maybe any cephalosporins which are generally prescribed. This is one infection where antibiotics are misused. There are plenty of other infections as well but this is one of the major infections. Are antibiotics necessary for common cold? Straightforward answer is no. Then why are antibiotics used in common cold? If a doctor doesn't have a knowledge on antibiotics or pathophysiology of illness, he will prescribe antibiotics without assessing any need. Secondly, People do go to pharmacist directly and buy medicines from him. This is called self-medication. But at certain times, he himself will suggest which medicines to be taken without any prescription of a doctor. As per law, it is illegal. Pharmacist can't issue antibiotics without consultation of a doctor or prescription from a doctor. Hence unauthorized issue of antibiotics by a pharmacist is a major contribution for misuse of antibiotics. Next point is VIP culture and pressure to give best care. Everybody need VIP treatment. Doctors too in a competition to raise their reputation they have to give VIP care to the patient. As I told you, 75% of the cases of upper respiratory tract infections are viral in nature. That means 25% are due to other causes, which includes bacterial infection. So competition is such a way that they cannot afford to lose one patient due to failure of treatment. So nowadays doctors tend to write antibiotics even when it is not necessary to maintain their reputation and to prevent failure of treatment. Very important another aspect is lack of patience. Common cold takes 4 to 9 days to recover based on severity of the infection and immunity of an individual. You have to be patient and allow for the natural healing. You cannot expect someone to do miracle all the time. You need to wait. Meanwhile, you can follow this. Drink plenty of water. Take rest. Restrict your movement and stop spreading infection to others. Take necessary advice from doctor. Next point is benefits from pharmaceutical companies for doctors as well as for pharmacists. This point is a self-explanatory, so I will not explain more about it. You yourself being a care seeker, don't demand unnecessary medications from a doctor. If somebody prescribes you some medicines, please confirm the necessity and discuss with the prescribing doctor. At last, not the least, know your disease before taking medicines. I hope you are clear with the topic. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video.